I regard myself as an external affiliate of this institute, so I regard myself as part of this uh, web webinar. I'm very uh, proud to to be invited and to speak to to you. And uh, <clears throat> if you if I use my title, "The Eastern Origins of Western Civilization." Uh, this is the book actually by John Hobson, and I'm going to tell you why I want to use this uh, this uh, uh, title. Um, today, as uh, Stephen pointed out, that China has uh, four uh, global in initiatives, the Better Road, the Development, the Global Security, and the Global Civilization. All these four represent a kind of world reordering uh, with Chinese characteristics, uh, not in a way that China wants to shape or create a new world order. I don't think that, but at least an emerging world order embedded with Chinese characteristics. Uh, this is, I'm quite convinced, okay. Especially now we are talking about global civilization initiative because uh, I think it's so important to discuss this topic today. As a professor working in the Western University for 30 years, I am so upset with the fact that the younger generation of, of, of uh, Western countries, they grown up with the, uh, the Western power, Western wealth. They think that the history, what they say is history. I don't think so. And uh, there is no education in the university, even in the high school, to teach the student about uh, the contribution of other civilizations to Western civilizations. And this is uh, what, uh, what Stephen just talked about. And uh, this is why I'm, I, I try to borrow uh, the book title by John Hobson, uh, a conscious uh, professor from, from UK, where he claimed that uh, uh, it is totally wrong that Western civilization was uh, entirely originated from the Greek civilization. That's wrong. East Asia actually should be placed on the forefront of the story of progress in world history. And that's why I, I use, I borrowed his book title to be my presentation and title. If we talk about uh, civilizational inference, impact or exchange, of course the Silk Road, I would argue that uh, from the Han Dynasty was the origin that uh, that uh, the uh, the Arab nations, uh, the Persians, they were the trader between Eastern Roman and, and Chinese Empire. Okay, but the real contact, neural knowledge, actually uh, came to Europe via Marco Polo, and especially Europe was shocked by Marco Polo's book, not written by him, but based on his story. And his book inspired, first of all, Christ Columbus, because uh, one of the Christ, uh, Columbus' remainings after his death was this book. So definitely this book inspired his uh, overseas exploration. Uh, the second is uh, the great impact on the missionaries, um, the Catholic missionaries. And one of them was uh, Matteo Ricci. And uh, this guy was uh, very important because, uh, because he uh, brought a lot of knowledge from Europe to China. At the same time, he translated a lot of Chinese uh, classics, including Confucianism, and translated them into Latins and later uh, published in Europe. And he even co collaborated with uh, a, a Chinese official to make a, a, a world map because um, he told Chinese many stories about uh, early European expeditions, uh, you know, colon uh, colonial uh, experience in uh, the rest of the world. So, uh, so all this knowledge compiled into a, a, a world uh, map. And that was his great, great uh, inspiration and his contribution. And that, I believe, inspired Zheng He's expedition. Okay. And we all know that, uh, I will mention about Zheng He later on. We all know if we read European history, uh, the, uh, the Renaissance, religious reform, uh, and also Enlightenment, especially the European Enlightenment. And, uh, and don't forget that Chinese civilization was among the sources of ideas, inspirations, references, and even comparisons and critiques of European Enlightenment scholars. 
uh, figures like uh, uh, Leibniz, uh, Voltaire, and Quincy, especially Voltaire, you can uh, uh, people can find uh, many of the uh, publications by Voltaire uh, through Google. You can find, and he wrote a lot about his comparison between the Chinese culture and the Western culture. He actually praised uh, Chinese uh, history and culture. He called the Chinese system, even though it is authoritarianism, but it is uh, benevolent authoritarianism. And uh, such authoritarian is based on meritocracy, not based on inheritance system, like the European uh, system at that time. And also the physical inventions, the great four inventions. And, uh, and uh, we all know that the sinologist uh, Nithan, Yusuf Nithan, he published together with a Chinese assistant professor, seven volumes of science and technology in China. Seven volumes, he made a great uh, uh, contribution. Even uh, in Cambridge University today, uh, there is an institute called Nidham Institute. And, they, and uh, he actually traced the Chinese invention and he claimed that uh, uh, just like Hobson, that uh, many of the Chinese inventions, they were the origins of, of Western technological advance. Both Francis Bacon, uh, the philosopher, English uh, philosopher and Marx, all praise uh, the great inventions and their contribution to the advance of European history. I just mentioned Zheng He that uh, 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 I believe that uh, uh, this curiosity about outside world was received from uh, uh, Matthew Ricci's missionary uh, expedition in China. Zheng He, he made seven voyages uh, from uh, 1405, 14 to 1433. And history, his many historians, we, dis, uh, we discussed why Zheng He made seven expeditions all the way to Africa, northern, uh, eastern of Africa, and he brought back no single colony. What happened? Okay, so that's why that I think that uh, uh, if, if, if people read uh, the news uh, about uh, uh, Blinken's visit to China two weeks ago, the Chinese counterparts told him that the Western logic, a rising power is doomed to be hegemonic expansionist, it does not fit China. Uh, China does not have the history, does not have the culture gene to be a hegemonic power, to be an expansionist. So I think Zheng He's uh, uh, experience shows that, uh, that uh, uh, demonstrate this, uh, this. When we talk about the Eastern origin, of Western civilization, then I have to give some evidence. What are the Eastern origins? And here, I think Professor uh, Shahid uh, Sh Alam from Northeastern University, later on, he published a, a very good article on the magazine called The Dissident. He asked his student to, to do an exercise in which that uh, they have to find out that uh, uh, whether a, a human being can go through a typical day without running into ideas, institutions, values, technologies, and products that originates outside the West. For example, China, India, Islam, and, and, and Africa. For example, you wake up with pajamas, is not Western. You, uh, you soap and shampoo, uh, wash yourself, is not, uh, not, uh, not Western. Toothbrush was invented in China, not Western. Toilet paper, tissue, they were also Chinese inventions. The breakfast, Okay, cereals, coffee, or they were not Western. Okay, many of the uh, the origin of the uh, of of the words uh, the Western world, they were also not Western in origin. Even the English language, the alphabetics, the English twenty twenty six alphabetics, they were not Western. Man, I told my students, they were shocked. What? Yes, they were not Western. They came to Europe. Uh, from Phoenicia, uh, this Phoenicia uh, group uh, already, uh, you know, died out, uh, disappeared. And also Arab number, we used the one, two, three, four, five, six. They were, why they called Arab number? Because they were invented by Arab. Even university degree, bachelor degree, bachelor was originated from the Islam uh, graduate ceremony. Many of the field studies, scientific terms, 
even gold bar were, uh, was already used in Egypt for 14th millennium before the Christian. Marco Polo came to uh, came back to Venice and told people about how uh, paper currency was used in China, which will shock the Europeans. And uh, the, uh, he told people about how the Chinese use uh, paper as a currency made from the bark of the mulberry uh, trees. So his conclusion in his article is that uh, during the 18th century, many of the leading Enlightenment thinkers, they were keenly aware that China or Chinese had preceded them in their emphasis on reasoning by some two million millennia. By the end of the, this century, I mean the last century, however, a more muscular, more confident Europe choose to erase their debt to China from its collective memory. Okay. And by ending my presentation, I want to again uh, mention Stephen uh, Brower, uh, the organizer of this conference. He said some extremely interesting, okay? He said the Global Civilization Initiative builds bridges between cultures. And in his speech in China, he said that the present ongoing effort to demonize China is based on combination of fear and the virtual total ignorance of both modern China and great history over 5,000 years civilization. So thank you, Stefan, for your very uh, innovative and very forceful words. Thank you very much.